It's time for Ask the Mayor on KWBE. And special guest with us today, in in place of Mayor Bob Morgan, is a Beatrice Water Superintendent Rob Merrow. And uh, first chance we've had, Rob. We had you in back when you, in your community development days, I believe, or somewhere around. Yeah, there, so. Chet and I came came out here. That's probably been a good uh, six years ago, maybe yeah. seven. Yeah. And uh, But, you know, Chet was here to help me through this process. So <laughs> yeah. now, I'm, now I'm flying solo. So. Now you're back, yeah. yeah. So now it hasn't been all that long. You're in your, what, third month since coming back about or somewhere around just, there? Just wrapped up my third yeah. month. So. You, had, you had kind of an interesting first three months there, didn't you? Well, it's been, <laughs> uh, you know, when when... Tim, who's been here for 40 years, tells you about every week that, uh, hey, we've never seen that before, and we've never had that happen before. It, it doesn't give you a lot of confidence that things <laughs> yeah. are going well. So You're kind of wondering when you get up in the morning, what did I get yeah. myself uh, into here? Well, I asked him a couple of times, like, yeah. well, if you've never seen this before, what have you been doing for 40 years? <laughs> <Yeah>. so. <laughs> well, the big thing was the thing by 6th and Lincoln, the repairs there, then up the block at uh, 7th and uh, Lincoln, too. Maybe just go back and take a look at how extensive those projects were. At the time. Yeah, the the sixth and Lincoln uh, was essentially a, um, sa- a tapping saddle and uh, a valve connection that just went bad over time. And mm-hmm. uh, when we opened that up, it you know some parts that aren't readily available, and you know had to wait a few weeks to get those. And so that was that was more the the timing of issue of things. Uh, mm-hmm. But that happened my first week I was here, like the third day, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, <laughs> that led over the course of time. Uh, to the, the issue at 7th and Lincoln, it uh, kind of surfaced itself during that repair uh, mm-hmm. that we had a leak up there in a, in a valve, and we ended up deciding to replace uh, uh, both of the valves there at 7th and Lincoln uh, as there's a cross in the, the two mains there. Uh, went to plan 99% of it, and then we got to that last percent. We were actually turning the water back on, and we had a uh, had a little leak and went to try to uh, seal that up and tighten that up and, and end up... Uh, uh, cracking the uh, cross there that um, you know showed some signs of fatigue already mm-hmm. and so it was kind of wearing so uh, end up being bigger than what it had to be and we end up having to do some things differently uh, in that process to get it fixed um, didn't put them back necessarily the same way but some of that had to do we spoke to the engineers and uh, with James our city engineer then also Olson's who has our, our our model on and kind of guides us that way mm-hmm. um, end up uh doing things a little bit differently and because we're going to end up uh, replacing that main probably in the 25 26 year so yeah. mm-hmm. you know one thing about utilities and we were talking about this a little bit before we went on here today is that uh on electric sewer water it's kind of things that you know the average joe like me kind of takes for granted because we don't see it on a daily basis it's buried or it's overhead and we don't really think of it but uh, when you actually get to a project site like that you dig in and you see how old some of the equipment is in Beatrice because it dates back to what some of it 80 90 100 years it's it's an eye opener kind of yeah we definitely still have some some 80 to 100 year mm-hmm. old uh, uh materials in the ground and you're right there's we have no idea what we're going to see when we actually open that hole. And that's, yeah. you know, it's like Christmas every time you go in there, you know, and open up a <laughs> new really present. Not really the gift you want. <laughs> Not but... the gift you want ever. So, but, uh, you know, that's also some of the, the challenges, you know, you get in there and then you uh, start to figure out what, you, you know, what the the process is to get it fixed. And, yeah. So. Before you came on, I was remembering back to last year when the uh, state loan work was doing being done on 4th Street and then downtown there and just looking at, some of the sections of pipe and some of the pieces pulled out of there. And uh, you can really see the age on some of that stuff. It was it dated back to probably, what, 1930, 1940, somewhere in there. So. Yeah, that's my understanding. I, of course, I wasn't here for that project <laughs> at all. Maybe that's good. Uh, but it is, uh, you know, uh, coincidentally, it is one of, or maybe the only project that's ever been maybe subcontracted out. Uh, it was a bigger project that needed to uh, mm-hmm you know just in in length and just some of the challenges with being downtown and that as well that they end up subbing out uh, a little more than Mm -hmm. i I shouldn't say the crew couldn't have handled it because they could have but it just would have taken more time uh, just the nature of the beast but uh yeah so that was uh one of the very few if any that was ever been subbed out so something to be proud of for the guys that have uh, you know established this department over the years Mm -hmm. so we might talk about the department itself and the staff. That was that's been kind of an adjustment too, because not only was Steve Kelly retiring after fifty years, he'd been here longer than probably any other employee in the city, I would imagine, or pretty close to it. 
He also had some people right below him that were either retiring or thinking about retirement as well. Yeah, I, I tell people a lot that I've spent most of my three months, <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> doing um, human resource management. <laughs> so that's pretty much it. It's been hiring and throwing retirement parties and planning those things. Um, yeah, Steve was at 51 years. Tommy Rudder uh, recently retired in July. He was 38 years. Kevin Peterson was 24 years. Uh, Brian McAllister, uh, another great employee, he was he uh, chose to go over to the uh, landfill operations for the last few years of his career uh, prior to my arrival, mm -hmm. and he was 33. Uh, Tim Lineweber is sitting at 40 years, and he's looking to retire probably in uh, October this year. Uh, Wayne Rickers uh, retired earlier this year. Uh, once I got hired, I was able to uh, have some conversation with him, and we brought him back uh, as he's, uh, you know, he sounded like he took another job. Maybe things didn't go as planned, but mm -hmm. we were certainly happy to have him back. Um, you add all those up between those, uh, what, seven guys or uh, six guys, and that's 226 years of experience. And that's a very significant number and probably unheard of in a lot of ways for a, a town and or department this size that mm -hmm. just – just a long time and their dedication and commitment to to the department and the city is you know really just second to none so yeah. give got a lot of respect for those guys and the work they've done over the years and uh hopefully we can uh mm -hmm. you know kind of follow in their footsteps in a lot of ways so you know in, in comparison you know even with wayne back you know that's 186 years that's that's gone so we got wayne back with 40 years experience we got some youth you know i guess that uh, we got high hopes for uh, hired a young man, Cody or um, Ken, uh, Ken, Ken Creek, uh, mm -hmm. twenty years old, hardworking kid, you know, and that's kind of unheard of to find some some young uh, young kids like that that want to work that that hard. Mm -hmm. uh, Wade Steinford hired him; he's about mid to late twenties. Um, have uh, hired Aaron Robertson away from Reisman, so I probably should apologize for Kevin. He's he's always had some really good employees, and and so uh, you know, wasn't my fault. I guess we we just put the ad out there. So yeah. um, we we've got a few guys that uh, well Ryan Boy who came over from uh, um, wastewater, and, mm -hmm. but he's been with the city for about three years, so a little new to the water department. But our but our uh, experience now kind of lies with. Uh, Cody Enderlein, he's he's sitting a little over three years, maybe four years. Uh, Matthias Wendelin uh, sitting at about seven eight seven eight years in there, and I think mm -hmm. uh, Matt Mason sitting about seven eight years yeah. somewhere in there. So uh, our experience, you know, dipped down to you know sixteen, well fifty six years. If you throw Wayne back in there, so if it wasn't for him, we'd be sitting about you know sixteen years or so. So it's it'll be a challenge to get uh, get guys up to speed. It's not a um, you know, when you, you put advertisements out there looking for personnel, it's not a job that, uh, you know, you get that guy that's going to walk through the door with five or ten years' experience doing yeah. this type of work. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, generally, these folks stay in, in these positions for a lot of years, as you've seen with what we've had here, and yeah. um, don't necessarily move from, from town to town to do this, maybe like a, a firefighter or law enforcement officer would or something along those lines. So, yeah. You know, by the same token, even if you have like a lot of uh, two-, three-, four-year employees – they're still developing institutional knowledge as they go along, so they will be the, uh, you know, maybe the some like the Steve Kellys of the future. That as they work through the job, they'll know about the physical assets of the city. So it takes time, though. Yeah, to build that up. And I think that's the thing with, um, you know, like a great thing about it working out with Wayne coming back. He has a lot of institutional knowledge. You know, Steve Kelly has so much. He's been here 51 years, knows everything. We were talking mm -hmm. before the show. He can tell you pretty much every part, piece, pipe, everything in the ground from through the entire city. And, and all of these guys probably could, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, Wayne was Wayne and Tim being the last two guys kind of standing here. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to kind of extract as much of that institutional knowledge as we can every day from them. And mm -hmm. uh, they've been very gracious to give that to us. And, um, you know, helping us along the way and giving it across the board to myself and, and, mm -hmm. and all the new guys and, um, you know, the tips and tricks that go along with it, too. I mean, some of it is, you know, you know, we the guys kind of know what to do, but how the tips and tricks and the, and the tricks of the trade to, to do it, you know, most efficiently and, you know, things to watch out for and, and that. So. Uh, these guys have been great and uh, looking forward to the time we have left with them for sure. And yeah. it probably is is not going to be enough, but at some point we're yeah. we're just going to have to go forward. So, Is there an effort, and I imagine this has taken place over time, to sort of uh, 
put in digital form or a better record form of what you actually have, the ages of pipes, where they're located, any problems you had in the past, that type of thing. Is that kind of an ongoing process? It 100% is, and that that's something that Wayne has done, uh, you know, kind of being on the water quality side and just uh, maybe more the tech savvy. One of the group over the course of time has mm-hmm. drawn the maps and uh, kind of put in all those things. We have that information. Unfortunately, it's not necessarily readily available. Like it, you would think it would be in the year 2024. Uh, we have, it's kind of spread across numerous databases, six, seven, eight different databases. And so it's not always the easiest to come to go out and get that information, bring it, you know, find it quickly and, and utilize it. Uh, that is a goal, I think, for our city as a whole mm-hmm. in uh, electric, water, sewer, um, everybody for that matter, trying to get maybe our GIS up and running that we can kind of utilize that to document things accordingly. But all of these things are documented. It's it's all somewhere. Um, and, and like I said, they've they've done a, actually done a really great job. I mean, some of the foresight that they had, mm-hmm. you know, 60 years ago to start putting it in, you know, file it a certain way, from what I can tell, has been it's been very organized that way. Yeah. It just have we've just never taken that next step to maybe make it uh, as accessible uh, in the field. So before we take our first break here, a quick question about you were with Beatrice Police long ago, then you took on building inspection or what is now community development officer or code enforcement combination, now water superintendent. Are there some similarities? I mean, they're, they're vastly different <laughs> jobs, I mean, in what you do day to day, but are there some similarities, I guess? Well, there was certainly similarities from the, the police department to uh, code enforcement and mm-hmm. the building inspections. There's enforcement aspect of that. And uh, just a lot of those type of laws and, and rules are very similar. Um, but then there's also some connection between the community development side and the water department in terms of what I did there, you know, leadership, management, the financials of things that go along with these these positions. And, and so it's kind of progressed that way. Um, I guess I'm glad I don't have to work for, work for Jay Murphy, I'll tell you that. So, <laughs> but, uh, no, we, uh, uh, you know, I was actually sitting down with our um, emeritus uh, financial rep came in for our retirement plans and all that mm-hmm. uh, the other day. And, and he told me, he's like, you know, you may be the first one that's ever had three different retirement plans because I had the PDE one, the city one, and now the BPW one. So uh, I said, like, well, I guess there's some legendary status there, right? So, yeah. <laughs> just a rollover. <laughs> yeah, just a rollover, yeah. man. So, but they all have their own little different different things. So they're actually all separate. So he's like, you know, we're going down the list. He goes, I've never seen this before. So, yeah, made it around the, right around the city, I guess. So. Yeah. Yeah. Rob Merrow, the uh, Beatrice Water Superintendent, our guest today. We'll be back with more in just a moment. Back on Ask the Mayor today with our guest, uh, Water Superintendent Rob Merrow. Of course, there's the big uh, water main replacement going on on Ella Street next to the city auditorium there. How's that project going so far? You know, that's been a that's been a good project for us, um, having a less experienced crew and you know this being almost everybody's first main including my own first main replacement uh getting to see um a lot of that you know it's kind of smaller in a way i mean it's maybe not that long Mm -hmm. um but getting to see all the kind of uh, pieces that and processes that go into to that in general so everybody's got to you know get hands on there they've got to see the entire process from beginning to end um I've gotten a few uh, unnecessary text messages from Tobias telling me I got guys standing around everywhere, <laughs> and I repeatedly tell him that, uh, "Hey, man, this is learning. This is our learning year, man, and, and it may go on for another another year yeah. or so." So, um, no, all in good fun. But he, uh, uh, you know, it's went it's went very well. We've, the the guys have you know stepped right up, and they were eager to learn and and really understand their job, so they can you know start branching out every day on their own. So, been a good project so far. Talk that. How big of a main is that? And that's just, is that an iron, is that one of those cast iron things as replaced with PDC or what, what's the You know, I believe it's, it is cast, or uh, I believe it's cast iron. I, I guess we didn't, you know, we didn't mm-hmm. take the other out. We bored this one mm-hmm. uh, and put plastic back in the ground. So, uh, but yeah, it's, we just moved it to the north a little bit because uh, engineering is planning, I, th- I believe now to replace uh, Ella Street or repave Ella Street, I should say. And, mm-hmm. and so they, they wanted to get water in there before they went and tore up the street and 
we didn't have to go tear it yeah. up again. Don't so want to ruin a new project. <laughs> yeah. Or whatever. So. Frowned upon, I think. Yeah. And that's so. uh, coming up, what, uh, early next year or something? Maybe late, maybe start late this year. I'm not sure. Somewhere uh, in there. I believe that James told me not too long ago that that was going to be a next year's project. So mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. sometimes don't pay attention to the things that I'm not completely a hundred percent involved with and <laughs> worrying about what I, what we're doing right now. So, yeah. but I'm pretty, I'm pretty positive. He said that was going to be next year's project. Yeah. So. We might talk a little bit about the planning that goes into, I think every year, at least the uh, past several years, there have been, say, maybe like a mile or a certain number of mains that are replaced in town because you know how old they are and you figure, well, you're on borrowed time with some things and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But what goes into the process of kind of looking at what you're going to, you know you're going to do in a particular year? Yeah, uh, a lot of it does have to do with the age and the planning process to replace those and kind of preventative maintenance, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, some of that stuff I'm still getting familiar with, to be honest with you, on what our projects are and what our maybe five-year plan is for some of those things. I haven't quite got that far. Again, been doing mm-hmm. HR for a lot of the three months here, so uh, <laughs> getting up to speed still on a few of those things. Uh, some of the things I do know that are coming down the pike a little bit, though, are, uh, uh, you know, we have the um, Westcourt Bridge. Uh, we're looking to bore that under the river uh, next year. So uh, that is definitely a project that's already been budgeted for. Uh, starting a planning process on that and engineering plans on that. Uh, that should be uh, should be done next summer sometime. Uh, we're looking at, uh, you know, with the schools, the new school being built, we have Lincoln School and Paddock, or yeah, Paddock School and Lincoln School are um, coming to our uh, i guess possession here soon mm-hmm. uh it is my understanding that we're you know those are going to be uh, developed into housing uh, mm-hmm. housing developments there we're going to uh, that's going to be a good project for us as well especially being uh, less experienced than um than what they've been in the past and i think we'll probably open cut uh, most of that water main through there uh, mm-hmm. when the time comes but that will be a good uh 2500 feet, linear feet i suppose of, of pipe throughout those two two uh, projects um, still got the school loop. I think we're going to, out by the new middle school or mm-hmm. um, elementary school, that we uh, will complete at some point in time. So there's, there's a, you know, nothing, some of this isn't hard on paper yet, but mm-hmm. I think that we're looking at for sure in the next uh, year, uh, like I said, West Court Bridge and probably the two uh, housing development sites where the schools stand today. So yeah. the, uh, the interest free water loan from the state that the city got of about, I want to say thirty million or somewhere around that. All of that's been committed now. Basically, that's because uh, that paid for the downtown uh, water main work. I think some transmission field work, mm-hmm. plus maybe some uh, I think generator work by the pumping stations. Yeah, so. I could be wrong, but I thought Hannah said that was paid off. Maybe it was something else she was discussing. But yeah. a lot of, again, a lot of that was done prior to my arrival, and mm-hmm. try not to. Uh, uh, dig <laughs> dig too far in the past if I don't need to and and uh, focus on the things that are in front of us today and, and yeah. going forward. So, yeah, yeah so that'd probably a better question for okay. somebody else. All right. Well, I figured I'd answer, ask yeah. you an unfair one. Here, yeah. your, your first time in here. So uh, before we take another break here, I know the numbers probably aren't out there, but just this year as far as water demand and usage, since you've been on board, has it been kind of typical or is it up a little bit this summer or what? You know, I don't. Uh, uh, Matt and Wayne give me those reports uh, every month, and and from what I can tell, it looks like it's been pretty steady. Mm-hmm. Um, couldn't tell you the numbers right yet. Maybe yeah. next t- this time next year, I'll have that uh, yeah. ingrained in my head. But uh, uh, from what I've seen on paper, those look like they've stayed pretty steady throughout the year, and that's yeah. kind of uh, pretty standard from mm-hmm. those discussions with with Matt and Wayne. That yeah. uh, you know, summer usage with water and lawns, and yeah. uh, just being hotter and pools and all those type of things that. Yeah. Uh, that that number does go up but we're pretty pretty consistent is what it looks like seems like it's been a bit of a mixed summer because i know we went through kind of a wet end of may june then we had a hot stretch there in part of july then maybe a little bit of rain back and now we're back to the dry thing so it's it's take your pick whatever time in the summer it's been kind of unusual in that respect well as we as we say right typical nebraska weather yep right yeah so it's just you take what you get and <laughs> Don't have any choice in that. <laughs> Can't just change it, it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be back to wrap up Ask the Mayor in just a moment with uh, Beatrice Water Superintendent Rob Merrow. Back on Ask the Mayor to wrap up things with Beatrice Water Superintendent Rob Merrow. Today, we're just right before they come out of the break there, we were talking about at least you didn't have to face the... Uh, Fourth and Grant big explosion, the water main that in, in my neighborhood that happened many years ago. That was quite a... 
Yeah, you might might have been a police officer then. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, that was the case. I remember that that uh, stretch of road and that intersection being closed for quite some time. Yeah. And I'm glad I didn't have to deal with that either. Wow. Um, Wayne did break out some pictures of that um, a few weeks ago, and it looked like a daunting task. And I know that uh, Tim and, and Wayne were kind of uh, reminiscing about that a little bit, and it was months worth of work, yeah. you know. And If I remember right, the force of that break and the water coming out actually displaced concrete slabs that began sliding down <laughs> the you, hill. <laughs> you remember correctly. The, the, based on the pictures I saw, there was yeah. a lot of erosion there uh, yeah. from that pressure as well on the base of that, that yeah. road. And it was it was quite an undertaking for those guys. Again, those the guys that were here in the past and, and those couple that are still left, mm-hmm. a lot of respect for those guys for the work that they've done over the years and, yeah. and the time they've put in. So. Well, and that's one of the things about the job is the unforeseen things that you don't know are going to happen just because of age of pipes or maybe shifting or maybe the stuff that's beyond your control often. Uh, since you've been on, it's only been, you know, three months as superintendent, but have there been a few of those unforeseen things that you just have to go out, either fix with your own crews or maybe get somebody else in to fix those? Yeah, I mean, every almost every day it seems like uh, we have some type of leak or service fix, and sometimes it's on our side, and sometimes it's on the customer customer side and um mm-hmm. and that that line's drawn at the at the pit there and you know we've replaced a handful of meter pits there's some what are, they've been referred to as paper pits that are going bad after uh, 30 years or so mm-hmm. uh, we're going back and replacing those somewhat regularly i think we've done three or four here in the last uh oh four to six weeks here mm-hmm. and so there's always those things and you know just water services go bad these you know these uh, fittings <coughs> pardon me these fittings uh you know, get uh, deteriorated and end up failing, and mm-hmm. that, that's part the part of the business. So yeah. it's a it's a constant battle in a way. It's just that you don't always like we spoke earlier. You can't see what's underground, right, until you dig it up. So that's kind of the challenging part. Probably so. always hope that the water main de- break doesn't happen during that. 10 degree below zero time in the winter but it does happen occasionally so. well i hope the water mains never break <laughs> so, <laughs> that's true i mean let's but if you had to pick <laughs> if you got to fix it it's probably better during warmer weather but <laughs> yeah and, I, and yeah it's been a been a while but they're they're probably more prevalent during the winter uh, it seems like and they're definitely more uh, difficult to fix more challenging uh, just because of the weather and um it's it'll be interesting when those times come when that time comes and uh, again i hope it we can push that off a little bit yet. Yeah. So maybe 2026 would be nice for the, for the next one of those. <laughs> As we wrap up today, maybe a quick comment about the, uh, the issue of water quality, which sometimes, uh, you know, it's something that you really have to watch out for, not just for present day customers, but well into the future, like five, 10, 20 years down the road. How important is that? And do you think people, residents kind of really place enough attention on that quality of water? I think it's, pretty well overlooked by almost everyone to be honest with you there's um you know there's certainly more restrictions every day it seems like with uh, you know the uh, federal laws state laws federal laws those type of things that we have to adhere to and and you know we'll battle that for for a long time but the water quality is has to be the most important thing mm-hmm. um to just you know for health reason we've seen you know everybody knows the flint michigan stories and those type of things and mm-hmm. um but from our standpoint we're we're blessed that we don't have any uh uh, we, the water that we get from our wells is generally pretty good. We don't have any treatment at this point. Uh, we certainly would like to try to avoid that in the future because every time you uh, have to implement those those uh, um, that equipment and buildings to house it and those type of things, it adds up and costs more money. So we've been pretty fortunate here in Beatrice to have good water on hand, and we want to keep keep that going. And you know that's part of the reasons we you know we bought the. Uh, prior to my arrival, bought the new well field out there, uh, just east of our current one. Um, you know, you could look back 30 years ago or, or, you know, before that, and you know, we had the old well field where we were getting getting water regularly from. Uh, you know, since over time, you know, that's those wells have had uh, higher nitrates you know, creep into those, and you know, so it's it's good that we have have mm-hmm. the uh, current farm that we have now and you know we're trying to see to the next 30 20 30 years to uh, get the next farm kind of up and running because inevitably mm-hmm. that will uh, you know it'll likely happen that uh, you know we'll need we'll need to uh, look at another source so 
The department puts out a water quality report annually too. Is that a mandate? Do, do you have to do that or what? Yep, that's a, that's a uh, I believe that's a state mandate. Some of those things I'm still learning on on when those go out and mm-hmm. and how those are put out. But traditionally, it looks like uh, you know uh, the superintendent signs off on those. But uh, I think Tim signed off on the last one because maybe during Steve's retirement and and uh, just having uh, our. Um, qualified you know operators that uh, we have in the state will probably sign off on those next year between wayne and, and matt those guys are the two that are uh what we call our water quality technicians if you will and they're kind of uh, running that side of the department so all right well rob we're out of time today thanks for coming in appreciate it let's hope for a next three months that isn't quite as eventful <laughs> as the three months before that <laughs> I, I hope you're right man thank you very much Doug. you bet